Welcome to Mike Drops the Mic. I'm Mike Lyman. Today, I had the pleasure of speaking with former Steelers running back, Jonathan Dwyer. Jonathan and I talk about his time in Pittsburgh, playing in Heinz Field, the past Steelers game versus the Browns, and the upcoming Steelers game Sunday against the Jets. Listen to our conversation. I hope you enjoy. So, Jonathan, did you get a chance to watch the Steelers-Browns game uh, this past Thursday? Yeah, I did. What are your thoughts overall on the game? I know the offense looked okay there in the first half, maybe. But then after that, we couldn't do much uh, in the second half of the game. What do you think about that? Uh, I feel like the Steelers are trying to find their identity of what they really are offensively. Um, I think that they're trying to figure out who who they really are. Are they uh, a run first team? Are they – a team that uses their play action off of that to take shots down the field? Uh, are they uh, a three-wide team? Are they a two-tight end team? Or figure out what their bread and butter type of thing is. So I think that's probably what their problem is right now for sure. And speaking of finding an identity, some of the ways that you have to do that are by utilizing your running backs. Uh, the Browns did an awesome job with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. How important is it having like a one-two punch at running back, being able to get guys rested up on the sideline and then bring them back into the game? I feel like that's just the way it is nowadays on every level. Um, you know, I do the same thing as a coach um, in the high school level, um, constantly rotating, um, finding niches for things of what each guy is capable of doing and adjusting my, the play calling to that and knowing what limitations do they have and what, their strengths are so I think you know obviously the Browns have the best one-two punch in the league and it's not it's not even close um so I think the way they do it is very essential for them uh, I think Pittsburgh could be on their way of doing that with the guys that they have they have a, I think they have more of a deeper group than most guys um but you know I think the Browns do a really good job with it and one of the guys that Pittsburgh has this year at running back is uh undrafted free agent Jalen Warren and he's come in and been a nice complimentary running back for Najee Harris. Um, he's, a, he's a smaller back. He's 5'8", but he's doing a really good job blocking. How important is it to be able to block as a running back and pick up linebackers blitzing? Um, I feel like if you can't do that, you can't, you're can't. you not going to be playing at all. Um, so that's the number one rule for yourself. I mean, obviously, if you make it to that high of level, of, you know, playing the position, you can run the ball. You can catch the ball. You can do all those things. But can you – pick up a blitz can you find out who is who's coming in from where and things like that so I think more of that is essential for a running back to be on the elite status of your franchise um you know obviously in the league around they want to know if you can catch the ball and run the ball but as a complete back in your franchise they want to see if you can do all three and you can be on the field for every single play that, that there's that they're out there sure and I also wanted to talk about you're talking about the Steelers being able to find their identity. And um, one of the issues with that right now is Mitchell Trubisky being explosive in the offense, looking good in the first half, but not the second half. What do you think the Steelers need to do to give their offense a spark? Do you think it's feeding the ball more to George Pickens? He had that incredible catch on Thursday night, but do you think it's giving Kenny Pickett a chance to play? What do you think the Steelers' offense needs to do to get get going a little bit? Um, I, don't, I mean, I don't think it's, it's worth taking Mitch out because he hasn't done anything wrong for you to take him out. Um, you know, I think he's trying to find his his way of as well. Like, he doesn't really know. I feel like he's playing of trying to figure out what his involvement is in the offense as well. So I think that, you know, they need to look at, you know, their offense as a whole and not really just about Mitch. I think – you know, they have they have a very great group of receivers. I mean, if not, if you know, if all of them are healthy and all of them are clicking, you know, they probably have like the the some of the I would say the best one of the best groups in the league, if not one of the best eventually to be. Um, they have skill sets of all different phases. Like Deontay's a you know speed guy can make you miss with the ball in his hands. Pickens is the freak of the group and. Claypool is, you know, the deep threat as well and can make things happen in the slot for him being such a big physical presence. And, uh, you know, their tight end is really good as well. Um, 
He's the best tight end we've had. I guess he's he's Heath Miller's replacement, and he's done a pretty good job as well. I think they should use him as well down the middle of the field. Like I said, I think it's just trying to figure out what they are as a whole offense. You know, the offensive line has got is better than what it was last year, but you know, it's in, it's still inconsistent at times. But I think the offense as a whole has to figure out who they are and what they want to do. Yeah, I agree. And it was also interesting to see that tight end, Pat Fryermuth. He had two catches there uh, near the end of the game in the fourth quarter, right over the middle. It seemed like we had been attacking the sidelines a lot during the game. And then he made some big catches there in the fourth quarter when, when it counted. It'd, like, it'd be nice to see more out of that from him. Um, the offensive line as well, uh, definitely looking a little bit better than it did last week. They did a great job stopping Miles Garrett. Uh, this past week. He's a big playmaker. As a running back, how important is it to have a strong offensive line uh, so you can advance the ball? I mean, you guys, you got guys like Saquon Barkley out there for the Giants, all kinds of other good running backs who have had trouble in the past because of their offensive line. Do you uh, do you think that that's something the Steelers need to improve on drastically? Uh, I think it's drastic. I think they're, do- they're doing it a- as we speak. Um, how important it is, I mean, it doesn't matter what level you play at, no matter if you're playing Pee Wee football, you're playing NFL football, you're playing on Earth, Mars, it doesn't matter where you play. If the offensive line, the defensive line for you isn't playing well, you're not going to win games. They're the most important group on the field. You know, offensive line makes everything easy for everybody else. And we can run the ball, we can do, we can, we, we become a more balanced attack, we can do anything. If, you can stop the run on defense. That means that you put them and make them one dimensional. And that means and if they're getting home on pass rushers, that means that the defensive backs have a chance to make picks. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, yeah, the guys on the outside get paid the most, but the guys on the inside are the most important people out there on the field. Yeah. And when whenever you played and you were running back to the Steelers, the offensive line was fantastic. And that was also – this is the first season without Big Ben – and he was your quarterback whenever you were on uh, the Steelers. What made Ben unique as a player and as a teammate? What made him big Ben in your eyes and will make him a future Hall of Famer one day? I think what makes Ben Ben is because he's big. Um, <laughs> but as a player, I think his uniqueness of um, his creativity, um, his never die easy mentality, he never, you know, sacrificed a play. You know what I mean? He never – um, I think Coach Tom used to call it John, his, you know, John Wayne mentality of, you know, not letting the bullet first bullet get you. You know, if he get, got hit, he would try to keep the play alive, try to make things happen. And, you know, at any moment, any time, a big play could could, could happen. And I think um, with the offensive line that we had, you know, with Pounce and Ramon and Gill and DeCastro and um, Beecham at the time when I was there, um, yeah, they were a tight knit group, and you know they did whatever they had to do to protect seven and keep seven up. And they knew if seven had time to time in the pocket, and he was able to extend plays, we were going to make plays. Are, are there any quarterbacks in the NFL that, rem, that remind you of Ben at all? Whether that's through the escapability, making big time plays. I would say the closest person is uh, Josh Allen. Um, mm-hmm. They have the arm talent. I think he has more unorthodox arm slot compared to Ben. Like he could throw from other for angles. But the athletic ability and how big they are, they're pretty much the same. I think he's obviously a little more faster than Ben, but yeah. Um but their their play style is really pretty similar. Pretty similar. Sure. So the Steelers have the Jets this upcoming Sunday at one o'clock. That's a home game at Akershire Stadium. How do you see this game going? What are some of the keys for the Steelers to win this game? Um I think really is to attack if uh, if Wilson comes back is to really get pressure on him. If Flacco's there, do the same thing defensively and try to r- raise havoc and um, most importantly stop the run. You know I know that's what um, you know Coach Tomlin preaches from the beginning is you know the most you know you know superior thing you could do on the, as offense and as a defense to stop the run and make and they get the run going. So I think they're going to try to establish the run first. And then obviously, hopefully, they're using more creative ways to get their playmakers the ball and using the run game as a way to open up for the pass game. Yeah. 
And the Steelers surrounded so many yards on defense last week. Again, that you got Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. It knew it was going to be a big day for them. The Steelers defense struggled against the run. This week, hopefully, they'll do better. But, um, yeah, so the game's at 1 o'clock. How important is it to have that home field advantage when you're playing a, a game like this? Um, I think, you know, I forgot what the name of the new stadium is called because I I, I, I don't know it as that. It should but, be Heinz Field still, right? But uh, Heinz Field is a very mysterious and mystic place. Um, a lot of crazy events have happened there from a from a play, player's perspective and seeing ridiculous plays being done from, you know, A.B. catching the ball on his head to Troy finger-tipping the ball to, uh, you know, I would say many big plays from any other people. Those are just a couple I can name off the top of my head. Um, field goals being missed by the opponents, which they could have been – Automatic field goals, but somehow the wind just hits it at the right time. Um, yeah, renegade yeah. plays, uh, we make a big time sack or a fumble recovery or a pick. So it's just it's just one of those places that's special. And um, you know, there's not too many places that I saw in my playing career that was like Heinz Field, and um, you know, it it was the closest thing I felt to a college atmosphere because obviously college atmospheres are a little more intense than the, than, the, than the pros. So it was the closest thing I saw to a college atmosphere. And that's funny you brought up Renegade because I've been wondering that. There's different times in a game that it seems like uh, teams get boosts and momentum swings and things like that. When the Steelers play Renegade late in the game, what's that like on the sideline? Uh, you played running back, so you weren't necessarily on defense, and sometimes they do that when the defense needs a big stop. But can you talk about the atmosphere on the sideline as a player do you feel a extra boost or just kind of immune to it at that point? Uh, I think the first time I think we were playing Atlanta, my first ever home game and uh, like regular season game in Pittsburgh, I didn't know what the song was. So when they played, I was like, what the hell is this? Like, <laughs> and I saw the fans reaction of it. So it was like, you know, this is pretty cool. Like the environment, they're like, well, just, this is just the beginning of the season. Like wait until like, we make playoffs or wait till we play Baltimore, or wait till we play the Jets or wait till we play Patriots, something like a more arrival mentality game. So when those games came and I saw how it did, how it influenced the crowd and how it influenced the defense and everything, it was exciting to see. Cause I mean, I'm watching the little highlights, the different highlights they have up there, some old tech plays from before when I was there and plays of that season and we played Baltimore, we would all it would all be all Baltimore plays and things like that. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, that had to be a crazy environment seeing that firsthand from the sideline too. Oh yeah. Seeing the towels, obviously is you know, yellow towels, you know, twisting in the air, people jumping up and down. So you feel the kind of like vibrations and it's shaking a little bit. So it was fun. What are some of your personal favorite memories from Heinz Field of you personally playing playing on the game and uh um Probably my first 100-yard game um, against Tennessee Titans. Uh, first time I touched the ball that game, I think it was like a 70-some yard run, which was like one of the longest runs in, in the in, in franchise history. So that was pretty cool. Um, big, big wins against Baltimore, obviously. Um, winning the AFC Championship and going to the Super Bowl um, my rookie year and um, – you know, any other any other big game win was was, was memorable. And you had those back to back hundred yard games as well. There, yeah, there, yeah. Um, yeah, that's very impressive as well. Yeah. Well, one of the last things I like to do for the interview is what I call seven quick questions. It's just seven short answer questions to just to get to know you a little bit better. Is that okay? Sounds good. All right. What is your favorite movie? Uh, Life. Life. Okay. So when you were playing, who were the, some of the uh, toughest defenders you had to go against, whether that was linebackers, quarterbacks, defensive ends? Who did you look across the line of scrimmage and you were you immediately knew, wow, this is this is a guy? Uh, Ed Reed, uh, Terrell Suggs, Luke Keekley, um, and probably Eric Berry. Okay. Do you have a welcome to the NFL moment? A lot of guys talk about that getting hit really hard in a game or in practice or anything like that. Do you have a, 
what, when you realized you were in the NFL from a big hit or anything? No, I won't say a big hit. I think it was more so just the uh, walking into the locker room type thing was you know, first my first practice was OTA and just walking on the field and like seeing the players that we had, like, you know, I was around the time where we were coming off. We were two years removed from being Super Bowl champs. So, you know, I saw Fer- James Ferrier, Lamar Woodley, James Harrison, uh, Snacks, um, Aaron Smith, Kiesel, Troy, RC, Ike, uh, Willie, Big Play, Willie Gay, um, Foot, and Lawrence Timmons. So, like, you look at that defense alone, you're like, that's a Hall of Fame defense. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then, you know, the offense was still kind – we were young at the time. You know, the only oldest people on the team offensively was Max Starks, Ben, and Heath. Hines. Everybody else. Hines too, right? That's and right. Hines. Yeah, Hines. That's right, Hines. So I was there the last two years of Hines' career. So seeing those people, you know, it was just like, especially just on the defense alone, it was just like, dude, like, thank God I don't have to go against these guys on Sunday. Like, thank God I, I got, like, they're on my teammates. So, but it also, it's just cool, just that atmosphere, meeting Coach Tomlin face-to-face. Um, well, not I mean not technically face to face. That was my second time meeting second second time seeing him face to face, but actually meeting him. Um it was cool in the Roonies and the history of the pro of the you know franchise and just that's pretty much my welcome to the NFL moment. And I've heard other welcome to the NFL moments as well, where the rookies have to pay for a rookie dinner and stuff like that. And they see how much <laughs> that bill costs and they're like, Oh no. yeah. yeah. Yeah, mine, mine, mine was okay. It wasn't as bad as others because my room is a very you know running back room is kind of small so but they they hit me a little bit but not not too bad okay so that would have been parker mendenhall all those guys they weren't too bad then yeah mendenhall and redmond and uh all those guys i mean they it could have been worse uh, like compared to others i i pretty much got delighted in the foot like it was you know it wasn't like three figures it's only you know it was the most most it's only two figures but it was it was it hurt me a little bit yeah. Well, you got to do what you got to do, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just use this tax right off. I got it back. So when you're talking about the uh, the Ravens and other teams you played against at Heinz Field, who do you think was your favorite team to play against? Um, I think Pittsburgh had rivalries with different people at different moments. Like the Tennessee rivalry was still kind of fresh. Um, I don't think it's too much of a rivalry now, but you know, after like Lindale White like threw the towel down and stomped on it, that type of thing, and it became like this big rivalry. And Heath, I mean, not Heath, the uh, Hines and Corlin Finnegan had their moments. Yeah. Um, but I'll, probably, I'll, probably the Jets and the the Jets and the Ravens during that time period was pretty was pretty thick. I'm um, Santonio Holmes just got over there from us, yeah. so you know, and some other people and. You know, they kind of they're, – they're, those two playing styles fit fit us. It was kind of like, you know, like a heavyweight champ type fight. So, yeah, yeah it was about the same. You saw Jets in the playoffs that year as well when you were going to the Super Bowl in 2010. Yeah, we saw them in the AFC Championship. Yeah. yeah. That was Rex Ryan's team that year, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, were, they were a good team. They were a good team. Um, are there any running backs who, whenever you were trying to develop your running style, that you modeled your game after at all? Uh, Marshawn Lynch. Uh, I loved LT with Daniel Thomason. That's the only person I've ever been like starstruck about. Um, uh, I would say, uh, rest in peace, Marion Barber. Um, because mm-hmm. I just ran with a relentless running style, so it was mm-hmm. very aggressive. Um, kind of angry in a way, but um, it was just, you know, it was my mentality was either be the hammer or be the nail. So, you know, I was just trying to be the hammer as much as I possibly could and make me make people miss at the same time. And then you know, obviously people compared me to Jerome because um, yeah. I had a good, I had quick feet like he did and good ag- and things like that. So, yeah. Well, that's always a good mentality to have, right? Yep. Yep. Well, I talked to Stevenson Sylvester last week. He was also drafted same year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, the last question I asked him, I asked him his Super Bowl predictions. He told me Bills over Bucks. 
What do you think? Who do you see in the Super Bowl this year? Um, I see Bills. Uh, NFC, I really don't know. Um, mm. Eagles have looked pretty good so far this season, too. Yeah, that's two, but I don't, you know, being a Pittsburgh guy, we can't cheer for Philly. No, no. Um, let's go with. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go with Green Bay. Let's see. If, let's leave Rodgers can do without Devontae. Allen. Let's see. And I was just about to say Packers because that's another one-two combo. Aaron Jones yeah. and Dylan. Those are two really yeah. good running backs there. So I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Bills, but I think Bills will win it. Okay. Um. I think they have a better overall team, so I'll go. I'll go with Bills do you over think this, Packers. This past week against Miami, do you think that was a fluke when they play again later in the season? Do you see Dolphins being able to pull off a win against? No, I, I think I think Dolphins are a good team. I just think that the Bills that win against is almost like a reset button, like kind of reevaluate yourselves, like finding out what their weakest things are, so they can fix them and move on. So I think that's probably what that 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 game was to me. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jonathan. I appreciate uh, your being willing to talk to me for a little bit. Uh, thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for coming on. Anything else you want to say here at the end? Uh, you know, go Steelers. And, you know, and that's about it, man. Appreciate it. All right. Go Steelers. Thank you.